I can see you, Erica. Can you see me? Oh no, my camera is off. I can hear you. There oh. you are. Oh, I got something in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it amazing how that happens? <laughs> uh, yeah. Just had a big salad. I figured there must be something in there. There we go. There we go. Oh, my face is there. There you are. Not this so, one in my face. <laughs> so that was some exciting news. You well, we'll talk about it in the thing, but we got a little exciting surprise in the town meeting. Oh. Yep. <laughs> ah, the town meeting. Oh, the town meeting. Exciting surprise would that be? Well, I was actually talking about the fact that you said you got some funding for our personnel. Oh, yeah. That was yes. That was exciting. I did. Yeah. That was good. That was a good surprise. Yeah, it was. So we have seventeen thousand dollars that we got in a grant through the community compact group, um, community compact program, um, to do the classification compensation plan. And so when I got the news, I'm waiting. There's a contract issue. I sent the contracts out two weeks ago, and they haven't gotten them. So I have to resend them. Um, okay. But now I got to send the guy an email. I just forgot today. There's a lot of things that I forget to do. Unless I write lists. I need like yeah. the entire wall of lists. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I got us a grant, $17,000. It'll help us with most of the cost, I think, for the compensation plan. Great. Um, That's awesome. Hi. Hello. We were so Hello. excited when we heard you say it at the meeting. We were like, hey, that's us. I know. We were excited. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. So do we need to call to order? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is Raloon Bialik and a motion to call the meeting to order. Second. Uh, is Erica Ross second? Yes. So all in, all in favor? Erica yeah. Ross, yes. <laughs> Balloon by Alec, yes? Didn't, yes. Okay. So I saw, Lisa, that you called out to, you reached out to Skip and offered that he could be at your house, but I guess we didn't hear back, huh? No, I even call. I really am harassing him because I even called him on the phone because I have his number. <laughs> Aww. But nope. So I, we tried. I tried. Yeah, you That's did. That's too bad. Have you heard from him, Casey? He doesn't like to do remote meetings. Oh, so he just, yeah. So that's probably an offer he wasn't really excited about. We worked <laughs> with him to try to get him to do one for the finance committee. And when it didn't work right the first time, he just sh wiped his hands of the whole thing. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard to see something and part, to not see something and participate. Yeah. Right. Oh. So, yeah. Well, hopefully, I don't know how much longer we're going to be doing this, but maybe before too long, a small group of us with masks could could have an actual meeting. I don't know. Have, do you have any guidance about that, Casey, of when that is that phase? It, it's part of it's the 25 percent rule that the governor has. After some very strong arm twisting with the finance committee, we had set up an outside meeting for them right before town meeting to go through the warrant and to go through the budget. Um, we got a lot of arm twisting on it. And the thing is, is the governor's order doesn't take into account a hybrid meeting, mm. meaning you have some people that call in or remote in and some people that don't. So it becomes an issue when you're trying to make sure it's legal. Um, mm. But the 25% rule is how many people can be in a space, um, it's 25% of your normal occupancy, which for us, you wouldn't think would be an issue, but actually is. So it's actually made it a little bit more complicated. When he had the under 10 and it was just under 10, we could pull that off staggered, people's hours staggered. But so if somebody wanted to meet in here, we have to clear the entire space out. Um, and we still need that remote connectivity because the law still requires that we have that ability. Yeah. So yeah. I don't no, know. 
I'm not, I, I shouldn't be in a rush, you know, it's, I'm just curious what your hand is. And yeah. <laughs> Wait, is. But, Even me. <laughs> yeah. So I saw a couple of you said that you had trouble getting this, the personnel policy thing. And, you know, when yeah. I played around with it, it was funny because I could open the one that's the Word document, mm -hmm. but I had, I also had trouble opening the, the one that was actually a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see the Word document. Um, I couldn't even get to the Word doc. I didn't see the oh, Word really? doc. Maybe yeah, I couldn't figure out how to do that. I got the error and I went back. I kept trying to do it. I would do it at weird times, like on a Saturday. And then away. Yeah. I think there's something wrong. Maybe we better. I mean, Casey, do you have the original? Maybe you could reestablish. I do. It. And I was fighting <laughs> with it before the meeting. Because I, I reminded me about the meeting because I was fighting with it. And I was reading through it. And there's, there's whole swaths of that thing I want to just delete. Mm -hmm. I don't like the formatting because what I was trying to do is compile the table of contents, which means you have to go through and reformat the document. I'm fine with that. I do it all the time because I'm trying to be yeah. a recovering yeah. perfectionist, but it's not working very well. Um, so I'm looking through it and I see these sections and I'm like, why does it name? And so my my brain started to fold in on itself again. But the point is, is you can work, I can work it in and work with it in Word. It's the Google thing that I can't seem to figure out. And then once you get the table of together, but you have to go through and fix all the headers to get it to do that. Because it doesn't recognize the headers the way they're created because they don't follow a normal formatting for headers, header one, header two, header three, where you have that, um, decline. I don't know what, I can't remember what they used to call it, but it's like a declining section header. It, it won't recognize it. I've tried. So I had to go back and fix it all. And that's what I was doing when, when Jennifer reminded me to get on the meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we can do it old school then. And after you're done with it, you could pass it on. That's what I was thinking. If I can just do it old school for a while and somebody can check it because yeah. Once you get into the header section, you go through and as you're looking through the headers, you're starting to, I'm starting to read it. And I'm like, wait a minute, we didn't accept that. And right. this is a 40 year old law that we should have accepted. And we didn't, we're, we're beholden to it now, mm -hmm. but, and so there's things and I've been reading Kate's and she catches a lot of redundancy in it. And that's what I started to see is yeah. the redundancy in it. So it really needs more work. It, I think it needs to be simplified because if you look in the different chapters, they have, it's almost like it's a, I don't know how many legal, how many legislative facts you guys have to read, but I have to read the law a lot. And in each chapter, there's an entire section of definitions. One of the things, so when you read legalese before you get to the content, you got to read all the definitions. Um, one of the things we did in Nashfield was we streamlined it. We put all the definitions in the beginning yeah. yeah, and then referred to them, except in places where we wanted to draw people's attention. And I noticed there's sections in there where you've got these, these bold areas where they're trying to get people's attention. <laughs> yeah. That is sometimes redundant too, but there's yeah. a lot of references the law and that's what I don't like don't recreate the wheel let the law stand because the interpretations come from the law not from it, it I shouldn't say that the interpretations come from the law the best ones because those are the ones that have gone through the court system if yeah. they're an issue yeah. yeah so yes I can fuss with it and I had planned to fuss with it I mean so I want I want to help as much as we can I'm just feeling when I look at it I'm not really sure what to change. I mean, I read it's the comment. Page. Yeah. And if, if you I'm don't do it for a living, it really is. You no, know, I can give the perspective that I find it quite unwieldy. And if this is the policy that we want to give to people when they become a town employee, it's very cumbersome. And, you know, okay. it'd be nice to make it clear and sort of, oh, this is how things work. Um, and okay. I know there needs to be the legal side to it, but that's, I guess, just my sort of non-professional non sort of hope. Yeah. 
You know what yeah. the beauty of that non-professional comment, <laughs> comment are? Is it drives the point home that we should make it less complicated and easier for people to understand. Yeah. So that's probably the most beneficial thing that can be said about what you had to look at because it isn't easy to understand. And a lot of towns make it more complicated while they're trying to create definition. And yeah. I find that some of my human resources colleagues would like to see it like that. And some of us wouldn't because you can make an interpretation if you have an outline. And that's really what I look at it as, is an outline. Um, some people aren't comfortable with that. Some people like it black and white, but I found in, in all aspects of municipal government that nothing <laughs> except people's unhappiness about that particular term. <laughs> now, are these, are, are and these... I don't mean that to be offensive. It just hit me what I said. I don't mean that to be offensive. I just oh. mean, there's two sides. You see, you see these, these ends of a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Instead of realizing that the vagueness in the middle is often the place that we live all of the time. Right. Well, what I'm wondering is, is, is there a regulation or law about it, an electronic document versus a printed one? Because I'm just looking at Waitley's policy has only 25 pages. I know. Ashfield is short, too. Ashfield is 54 pages. I mean, I spent a lot of time. We had to add sections. Waitley doesn't have some of those sections, though. Yeah, they <laughs> haven't added them either. Well, one of the things Eric said is that we um, could we have a link to more text? So could there be a, like an outline version of a manual that has links to like more detail so that it wasn't so long? Is that is that legal to, to have an electronic? I think you have to have it when you hand, because what you should be doing is handing it out to every new hire and handing out, handing it out intermittently to employees as things are changing. And so that generally leads you to a paper document most of the time. Sometimes you can email it and we can make it live online um, in the employee section of the website, but often you have to have that paper copy, if nothing else, so that they can sign off and say, I received it. Mm -hmm. I received it and then I didn't read it. And then I, and I didn't read it. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess the other question that, that came to my mind that maybe we can clarify is sort of just to get a little more clarity on the purpose of it. And I guess that you saying that it's going to be handed to every employee when they're hired yeah. and it's going to be distributed to everyone and occasionally given out when there's a change. And yeah. I mean, I guess maybe that just is like a a reference point for what we want to be, if someone has it, what do we want them to be able to, to use it for? What we want them to be able to understand is how their time is accruing, how they are treated if there's a situation where they require some sort of a reprimand. The steps for an investigation, for instance, if, if there's an altercation or an argument or something that happens between employees. If we get a complaint about an employee's conduct by an outside person, mm -hmm. there, what it does is it refines that. We also have to show people where they can find more information about um, employment equity because um, there's state offices and federal offices um, where they can find information about some of the human resources laws that live in the state and federal sectors that are literally, and this is the point where you add links, Lisa, yeah. you add links when you're trying to get them to a document that may change, but that you have no control over. So we would do a link to unemployment, just, just for instance, because unemployment has documents they can fill out that often will change but we don't have any control. So we might have a five-year-old document where the, the document may have changed like right now during COVID. If they had unemployment forms or they had some other thing, labor practice forms, if we want to get them to the most updated form, we send them to the website. Um, right. And if the link doesn't work, they can get in touch with us and we can facilitate that. But often we, I would go through and investigate links as we were going just as a check to make sure our links were correct. Um, it cuts down on appendices. 
So appendices can be very unmanageable. It can be applications. It can be um, vacation forms. It could be all sorts of questions, all, all sorts of forms. Um, what else? Basically, it's a guidance document, not only for management, but for employees. So they have expectations of how they are going to be treated. And the town has expectations on how not only we will treat them, but what we expect from them as employees. But it's not just your, your regular employees. Anybody that's classified as a special municipal employee, um, and that can be an appointee like yourselves, um, those codes of conduct also are need to be followed by rights. Elected officials don't have that that limitation. Unfortunately, they can misbehave if they want, and they do. <laughs> but that's that's the that's the thing is you're also giving this to special municipal employees or municipal employees that are appointees, and we expect them to follow those same rules. Um, before we go any further. Um, and this, can we just, can I ask if you can go back to um, reviewing and approving the minutes from May? Yeah. Is there, especially there was something sensitive on that that I didn't know if it was okay to have in the minutes. Do you all <clears throat> have those handy yeah. or do you see them? Yeah. So I have, especially, I mean, the, the call to order approval of minutes, review of draft personnel policy, but I'm talking about number yeah. four, the future action items, Casey, is that okay to put that in there? Let me look at it. Okay. Give me a sec. Uh, I mean, I can just abbreviate it if it make it less detailed. So what? It, which one is it? Uh, number four. Oh, future action. The cap on the amount. Yep. Well, that's. No, that's fine. We did have that conversation. It wasn't in any detail. The thing that you don't want to do is talk about a person. In this case, we talked about a situation where we uh, ran into that problem. So as long as it's a situation, and, and be aware that I have to remind myself to do this all the time, because the idea when you run into a problem like this, or even when you're interpreting the personnel manual, is to put it in the context of the position and not the person. And that's something that is very yeah. hard to do, especially for me. I'm one of those people that's very, I like to be connected to people. I like to talk to them. So this type of a meeting is hard for me to do because I like to see people and, and connect. And so when I talk about an employee issue, I have to remind myself not to put names in there. Yeah. I do have a question on number six, uh, very minor, but it says, Motion, Lisa made a motion to adjourn at 4.45. That highlighted too. I think that's supposed to be seven. Is, well, we, we adjourned oh, yeah, at 7.15. Okay. Yeah, I'll put, I'll change that. That was, that was from an old. Perfect. Minute. So I'll put that in. Uh, uh, oh, look, you're, it's working the Google document feature because your name is appearing on my document. Yeah. <laughs> I see that too. Oh, the document works. Yes, I did yes it. this one works. It's alive. Okay. <laughs> so I, are there any other any other changes, edits? No, everything else looked good to me. Okay. So can I? Yeah, make, it looks great to me too. Am I allowed to make a motion to approve the minutes? Or do I? She can make it. Okay. Great. Okay, so I make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 18th meeting. Okay. Eric, second. And uh, all in favor? Or do you, do you say all in favor, Lisa? Uh, so let's take the vote. So Lisa Middens, yes. Erica Ross, yes. Verloon Bialik, yes. Oh. Yay. Roll Ooh. call is our friend now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, when we were at the protest on Saturday and everyone was masked, I just started walking up to people and going like, hi, it's Erica. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Like as if we were on the phone, like, hi, it's Erica. It's Erica. <laughs> this is me, especially with masks. Yeah. I had a hat, I had glasses, I had a mask. I'm like, nobody knows who I am. I think we all oh, like yeah. people people all probably can like, recognize you. Yeah. Trying to be incognito. <laughs> yes. Exactly. 
<laughs> the incognito mask. Yeah, the hat on me and a mask, and nobody will recognize me. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> All are calling me? You know, they just. Oh. Uh, so, do you think a good next step then is is for you to because we're having? I know, to, and I have you so wanna... many projects and so little time. But I yes, know, but... something I do not want to lose track of. There's two other things that I want to bring to your attention for maybe the next meeting, yeah. Um, because if if I can give you a a more streamlined document, you guys can read it at your leisure, and I have to schedule that in all. I've got some meetings I have to do for other meetings for other things. So, but if, if, so here's my question, two things. If you have a streamlined document and can read it else, even though I can't work in the, I'm having trouble working in Google docs and that's probably a skill in That's a skill enhancement that I have to fix. Um, but if you guys can comment in Google docs, then I can take the comments because I think I can print the comments mm -hmm. and pull them back into the Word document. I haven't tested it though. <laughs> we can comment in Word too. I mean, Word has tracking features. Yeah, Word has, yeah, that's what I do is I do, especially with council, if we're doing like the, for instance, the annual town meeting warrant or any warrant, we do yeah. comment and track changes so that we can see where people have made changes. Um, particularly if they're ones that have to be accepted because they're, um, language changes mm -hmm. and that's a lot of what council does. So I can do it in word and people's comments will show mm -hmm. up because Lisa and I've gone through contracts, pages and pages of contracts. Lisa is our um, town council. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> um, so I can do it that way, but my bigger question is two things. So we briefly Raylun, we briefly discussed the fact that we now have a grant for the compensation classification plan. That's we great. need to get started on that. And we have, there's a group that does these. They've done, they did one for the town before, but I don't see the deliverables for it. So I talked, the, actually the woman that works for the Collins, it's called the Collins Center. It, they are out of UMass Boston. And they specialize in these types of things. One of the th deliverables I didn't see Is was job descriptions. I think they just did a compensation Collins plan. Center? Yeah, the Collins Center. Okay. Um, they specialize in human resources. They do a lot of the trainings that the town administrators and other HR professionals take during the annual conference and at other venues. Um, so the Collins Center there's a couple of things that came up in actually a finance committee meeting that I think we're going to need to adjust our contract with. But the Collins Center actually helped me. First of all, the lady at the Collins Center told me about the grant because I didn't know it was still open. Oh, wow. um, and then she gave me a scope of work. And so I was ready to go with that scope of work. But at a finance committee meeting, Skip actually made a suggestion that we instead of just focusing on full, our full-time regular staff, that we include some of the other staff that sort of lives in the, lives in the ether, like the library aides, summer help for the highway department, um, anytime we would have a part-time job. Um, we also, you guys had approved, I think, the part-time position for um, Kevin's office. Yeah. So that's what I mean is a generic part-time position or a generic laborer's position, something like that. That's going to add a few bucks to it, but we didn't delete the entire amount out of the budget when we reduced the budget down. We reduced it by, we had 19,000 in there in the event that we had these little tickler things that came up. So we left four grand so we have the 17,000, but we also left four grand if we needed it. So the question I have for you is, um, generally the personnel board is involved in review at some point of this stuff. And the process goes like, they send us personnel questionnaires, people fill them out. Now, somebody's done this because somebody else has one that they were gonna give to me. Now, Casey, or do you want a new one? Or do you want me to give you the one I have or do you want a new one? And I'm like, 
I don't know yet. <laughs> But so you get the questionnaire, we fill it out. They take the job description that's current and they add in the elements that the person comments on in their job description. Yeah. And then they come back with draft job descriptions. Now, I would normally, and this is what I did with personnel board. We didn't get to this before I left at Deerfield, but in Ashfield, I had them start looking at them. The issue is very similar to what we're seeing right now with personnel manuals. This isn't something you guys do every day. So it sometimes can be difficult to parse through it. One thing that I will say is they're, they tend to be pretty uniform. And you've seen them. If you've seen your own job description, you've seen a, a regular sectioned job description with measurable um related I'm trying to think of the word and I can't it's it's the quantifiable sections where you have you have things that you're measuring your employee on mm -hmm. in reviews that correlate so those are going to I don't know that those will change much but I think duties are definitely going to change and yeah. that's because in the time that I left and now people's jobs have changed a lot yeah. so what would then happen is when we get those job descriptions, we would want you to take a look at them. Um, once that's done, then they correlate those job descriptions to a classification plan. So where do these people fit? And you've seen the classification plan. It's, it's not terribly complex. It's, but one thing that seems to be a little vague is middle management positions. And so Jennifer Gannett, the, assistant town administrator is in that kind of vague area. And I noticed that in the past couple of years, when I went back and looked at some of the stuff that the personnel board had reviewed in terms of positions, that may be the place where it's useful for you guys to see a difference between what is normally classified as a management position. And then this, this area that's vague right now with an assistant that may not have the same authority to handle um, certain interactions and tasks because it's never been brought up as that next level, that middle management level. And so I think that's gonna be the challenge. Yeah. So that's a place where you guys, just not being in it, having, you're gonna see it from a different perspective. So it could be useful. That's the first thing. And I don't know how fast it's going to go because I need to see if Mary needs me to change the scope to include these outliers that we hadn't talked about. But I did want to take Skip's suggestion into account because it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and since he's not here, I'll throw it at him. He, this was a good suggestion on his part. So the other thing is, is we have to, so we have an employee who is retiring and we need to fill the position, or actually, I talked to the board about this briefly, individually and with Kevin. I kind of would like to see us reorganize the highway department more into a DPW, where you have, and this is what I'm, why I'm talking about middle management, where you have the superintendent, an assistant superintendent, two foremen, and then your staff. It's kind of like how we have it in here, except we have fewer staff members. We have me, the assistant town administrator, and admin staff. Can I just interrupt you a minute? Can you repeat that? So how would, what, what would the hierarchy be if it was more like a DPW? This is how it's in my head, but I haven't worked it out yet. But this is how it normally would go. Is you would have the superintendent, an assistant superintendent, and then you have these um, supervisor positions like the foreman, the chief operator um, in the wastewater treatment plant. So you'd have, so I can make you a picture, just not right this second. <laughs> so what, but so what, is what it, it would do is create that middle management area. So Meaning now, the assistant. Yes. Yeah. So we now don't have an assistant superintendent. So now the highway department is totally separate from the wastewater? They operate as a DPW, but they aren't organized in that manner. DPWs are organized once you accept a certain chapter of the Mass General Laws to create a DPW. It functions a little bit differently than just individual departments. The reason I say it operates that way is the superintendent oversees all elements, transfer station, highway, wastewater, 
buildings maintenance, he does that too. So organize, starting that organizational structure to encompass those things gets us closer to moving to a DPW form of organization if the select board wants to pursue that. And they would want to take your temperature on that too because it's a personnel action. We're not there yet, but I have mentioned it. Because if it's operating that way, sometimes the management outline for that works better if you've accepted the DPW statute. It's come what, up before. What's the way advantage? Before I was in PA. What's the advantage of accepting the DPW? Um, the structure becomes a little bit different financially. It doesn't change significantly, mm -hmm. but the structure becomes more identifiable as as. Maybe quantifiable is a better way to put it. Um, I have a couple colleagues that if they had, they haven't, we haven't been able to connect on it. They have DPWs that were organized in the last 15 years. So they have a better idea of how that works. Um, and I had reached out to them, but I hadn't followed up with them yet. Okay. And so, so what, what I, where I was going with that is, is we need, a, we need to think about the assistant superintendent's position. We had a job description in 20, 2014, I think, because the select board considered creating that position. Um, it didn't end up working out that way. They left it status quo with a superintendent for So in the highway department, it's superintendent, foreman, and workers. Um, this is why a DPW structure is a little bit better because you, you actually bring in wastewater transfer station building maintenance and you put it all under one umbrella. And that hasn't, it, it operates that way, but it's never been defined that way organizationally. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, we, we need that. We know we need it now because the DPW is very busy and some organizational structure will help them do the work better and faster. Yeah. Yeah. Observation, having been here, left and come back. Um, but we had that position. So I'm looking for the job description. That's one thing because we're going to need to hire relatively soon, hopefully to have some overlap between the person who's retiring and who we would would hire um, because, you know, the person who's retiring has done a lot of that stuff. It's not necessarily in his job description, but he, he was, he was the assistant. He was the interim superintendent years ago when Hap Eaton left in 2011. That's he's worked here for 36 years. So the guy that's thinking about retiring we wanted to create a situation where we could have the benefit of his institutional knowledge and bring that person on board, um, which means next month we need to get a, a job description out. So my request to you is, would you be willing to meet earlier in the month if I could get you the job description by, because you usually meet the second Monday? Third, usually. Third. Third. Okay. Yeah, I, I could certainly do that meet earlier and and look at it the only thing is that it's a little bit tricky I mean I'm happy to I just speaking for myself looking at a job description when I don't really know what they do I I can say if it's if it makes sense the way it's written but does it actually is it actually correlated with what their job is right that and I so all right let me think about that because one of the things that we noticed we needed, and that's why this came up, was I'm trying to think of how to describe it, but we ran into it here. We needed somebody with a certain amount of authority to get things done if, for instance, the superintendent isn't here. Mm -hmm. um, somebody who, that's one of the reasons that job descriptions have changed is because they've noticed that there's a lack of response if people don't have a certain amount of authority in their job description. And I still question some of it, but having a foreman is different from having an assistant superintendent. Mm -hmm. So the job itself 
I know um, the foreman's position has changed, but we would be creating almost a new position to hire somebody into yeah. at a higher level of responsibility. So we're asking for a higher skill set. We're asking for a deeper knowledge of a lot of the the interactions you're going to have. Not necessarily. You can learn to do. You can learn to let the chief operator do his job, but the background paperwork is what this person would have to have some knowledge of yep. as a support mechanism for the superintendent. And so that's how, that's how you end up growing a job. If you understand that distinction, that's how I grew my job was understanding the distinction between an admin, an executive assistant, and then a town administrator, because over a period of time and see this happened over a period of time, but they didn't recognize it until the last two years because when, Wendy said that to me years ago. She said, you really should have been an assistant because of the level you were working at um, in support of the town administrator's position. So that's really what you're looking for is you're looking for somebody who can support the superintendent's position by having not only a higher level of authority over the staff, but also a more comprehensive understanding of what the, what the, the work is supposed to be. You know, what we're pushing out for services over a wide range of, of disciplines. But that doesn't mean you can't look at a job description and say, hey, what about these two things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easier if somebody not in the situation looks at it because you see it, like I said earlier, with a different perspective. So I just want to be clear. So what is the position of the person who's retiring now? What is it? Foreman. Foreman. Okay. So you want to keep that position, but add a new position that would be called assistant superintendent? We might not need another foreman. We have two foremen. We have a, a, a foreman that's, that's, that position is more geared to the highway and transfer station work. And then there was, there was a foreman's position a while ago, and I'm trying to figure out who's filled it, um, where you had a building maintenance Mm -hmm. skill set included. So you had two foremen, but their focuses were slightly different. And so that's where a lot of the communication, like a lot of the documentation is gone. I can't find it because I remember what it looked like. I was here. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. as people have changed, as things have changed in the office, this documentation is lacking. I can go back. I have some of it in my in my backup drive that I left. And I think that's where my super, my assistant superintendent job description is, is in my backup drive. Um, but, and so I went looking when I actually sent this information out to Mary Cardi at the Collins center, I said to her, this is what I have for job descriptions. And that's how she built the quote. And then I realized that these late, much later on that people aren't working in the positions that they originally were hired. They're, the positions have changed and the titles have been referred to differently. Mm -hmm. So that's a sticky wicket thing that has to be refined. And if you look at a foreman's position and you look at, or the foreman's position we have right now, the job description, and you looked at an assistant superintendent's, it would look very different. Mm -hmm. So uh, now our job descriptions for other towns, are they public record? I mean, can yes. we, go, we could go and search uh, yeah. for other towns have for a job yeah. for their some towns will have them published and won't you'd have to ask for them um yeah. it well, depends sometimes it just depends on how robust their website is yeah well we could, i mean couldn't we theoretically ask for those for samples of other mm -hmm. towns, job descriptions so that would be something to, to base our edits on and so that yeah in terms of that position, though, my memory when Kevin came in, which was like December, November, December, he came to our meeting and we approved that position. I thought it was more like, an, yeah, I thought it was more like an administrative assistant. I didn't think it was an assistant supervisor. It was like an assistant. No, no, no. It, it was. It okay. was. I can use the situation. Okay. Okay. We didn't have a retirement we were facing at that point. Got it. Got it. But it was, it was an admin assistance position and okay. that's been maintained in the budget. So okay. we do want to hire for that too. Um, 
So that but was probably the job description we saw, if we even saw you did. it. Was, okay. yeah, you did. Yeah. That was the one I went back and I looked. That's the one that you saw. Uh, and that's totally appropriate. It was a planning. We were planning to hire that person. And then when COVID hit, nobody knew what was going to happen. Right. We managed to find a way to balance the budget. We're still waiting for the schools. We will probably go back and look at the budget again in September. Um if we have to make changes, we're trying not to cut things out of it, but it really depends on what school aid looks like. So, okay. you know, we're waiting for that. And Darius and the other three town administrators and I have been meeting regularly so that we can start ironing this stuff out, at least in a discussion format. <laughs> yeah. So when I came on, sort of the quick background on this is when I came on, I found out that this person was probably going to be retiring, but I didn't know when. And I'm much closer to a date at this point. So now that there's a timeline in my head, you guys are going to need to, because as the personnel board, that's part of your responsibility is to look at these job descriptions and see if they're approved. So the first thing I can do is I can see if Mary will send me one. <laughs> um, but I also know three other town administrators that have assistant superintendents and can send me some. Great. You know, that's all. Um, Hadley has one and they have a true DPW and the connection between Hadley, uh, David Nixon used to be the town administrator here years and years ago. And David went to Hadley. And one of the things that he encountered was a much more robust organizational structure. And so mm -hmm. he's taught me over the years how to look at those things. And Deerfield's growing toward that. Hadley doesn't, it doesn't have a, a great deal more people, people than Deerfield, they just have a very robust economic development sector, which impacts their, their struck, their municipal structure. You mean all those businesses on route nine? Yes. <laughs> all I don't end in, in most cases. <laughs> well, yeah, so Take a I, turn I, off route nine. It's much prettier. Oh, no. But that's how they preserved all that land. Yeah. Can we possibly back up to go back to the personnel policy for a minute? Yes. Because um, I was just taking a look. I remembered from a previous meeting you said that Ashfields was really good, and I'm and I'm just wondering what it's your thoughts. It's good. Were. It's shorter. It may not be good the way you want it to be good. Fifty-five pages, and then Waitley's is twenty-four pages. So, do you think we can do one that? I think we should do, probably shoot for something in between. But the thing about Ashfield is that there's things that Waitley doesn't have that have that may have changed, and we made references in sections uh, or in definitions. Okay. Um, and how similar? I is would have. I haven't compared the documents side by side. Uh, so I mean, a lot of Ashfield looks amazing. It's extremely comprehensive. They have a great um, introduction and and definition of terms, but. I'm just wondering how similar in governance is Ashfield to Deerfield? Like, is there really significant things that that we do that they don't do that we, would mean that we could? No, actually, the basic governance is the same. The personnel board has the same charter as you or the same charge as you guys do. Yeah. Um, they work in a in a close manner. They're supposed to work in a close manner with the appointing authorities. And the appointing authorities are very similar. The Board of Assessors is the appointing authority for the assessor's assistant. Um, the select board is the appointing authority for most of the department heads and staff for the, for the departments. But you also run into the library trustees. The library trustees are generally the appointing authority or the hiring authority for the um, library. So there's some outliers, but that's a structure that's normal in Massachusetts. They've mm -hmm. created those, they're almost unified sections where small towns without charters have, have sort of been defined by the law. They haven't, a charter, we don't have a charter in Deerfield. Ashfield doesn't have a charter either. And what the charter does is it just defines certain, I shouldn't say just, it defines certain um, municipal structure elements, mm -hmm. but if you don't have a charter, then you follow the 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 legislative act, act allowances that already exist, and we do. The, that structure is very similar. That was one of the reasons I was looking at it. But Waitley, I would have to look at Waitley and Ashfield side by side, and I haven't done it. I'll be honest with you. Hey, 
through. I didn't get to wait leaves, but definitely I saw. I looked through Ashfields, and the other question I have on um, Ashfields is it mentions an employee assistance program, and Erica mentioned that in the last meeting. Does Deerfield now have a a function? We've always had one. So you do have one. Okay. And if you look at our website, this is the difference between Ashfield mm -hmm. and Deerfield, though is all of our employment resources for employees are on the website now. So being able to put yeah. this up on a website would be incredibly useful. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because yeah, it, it, it's a lot of language and a lot of detail, but when you need, when you have a certain issue that comes up, you need all that detail for each one, like exactly defining sexual harassment or defining the family. Right. Life. And sexual harassment is fluid thing. So yeah. Your care, we try to be careful about allowing enough detail so people understand it's this, these examples are not allowed, but it isn't limited to just these examples. Right. While right. you give your latitude to make a decision that if somebody says something the wrong way, like you make a comment, you don't think it sounds bad until it comes out of your mouth and you think about it. But if somebody finds that offensive, there's the availability for an apology as opposed to terminating a person. That's what I mean about fluid. Yeah, I thought they did an excellent job of a really comprehensive job on that. And the other, the only other question I have, and, and I'm sorry I didn't write the page this appears on, but they're talking about increases in salary. Um, and I'm wondering this because this has come up for us since I started serving on the board about so it says increase in salary is recommended for employees on an annual basis. This salary adjustment will not be given separately to the, those employees receiving a salary adjustment based on market rate, employee longevity, change in job duties, and or performance. But it may be one factor upon which that adjustment is based. It will not be given to those who have another salary agreement with the town. Okay, so this sentence was one I was asking about. Salary adjustment recommendations are dependent upon select board approval and town meeting appropriation. So is that yep. true for us too? Yes. So yes, there are contracted employees that are outside of a classification compensation schedule. Myself and John, um, we both have contracts and it's allowable within state law to do that. There's only certain positions that can have those contracts. Everyone else should be on a salary schedule and there's there are positions that aren't and this is one of the reasons that i thought skip's comment was such a useful one is it it but it it cre could create a more tiered structure but most towns if they don't ashfield didn't actually have a classification compensation table uh -huh. banner a, a, a guidance document that they used but they didn't have a, a specific table because the select board didn't want that they wanted some fluidity, but they had the same basic idea. Certain contracted employees can have a salary outside it and other employees had to follow some sort of a, a parameter, like a range or in this case, a step a grade and step program. Uh, okay. So when it says town meeting appropriation, that means you have to have a special, um, that's on the warrant of the town meeting. Can we it's actually in the salary section for each section of the of the budget. That includes salaries. So when you're uh, voting the warrant, it mm -hmm. includes salary. Uh, okay. When you're voting the budget, sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's all I needed to ask. And about that's that. what they mean about appropriation. If you haven't appropriated for a person's salary, you can't pay them. Right. Appropriation. Yep. Okay, so the next steps, it sounds like, are you're going to get us all the documents at some point when you can. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, can and you say I better get my act together? <laughs> <laughs> so many things, I know. And get it in Word, send it to each of us in Word, and in we Word. can make track changes or questions or comments through the yes. track. Especially comments when you read something that sounds weird. And I'll look at Ashfields and Waitley and see how they've got it structured. Because it might be Waitley's structure would work better. I'm okay. not married to Ashfield. It's just been my most recent exam example to use. Yeah. yeah. Definitely the table. I really don't like the new Deerfield one. Really helpful. And just having all the numbered sections is really helpful. 
Well, that's why I wanted to do a table of contents. But when I yeah. looked at it, I realized it's confusing the it's confusing word the way it's written now. Yeah. In in the draft that we were looking at is it's just confusing. Yeah. So it's creating tiers that don't exist unless you define specific styles, which I'll be honest with you, I don't have time. Yeah. 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 Um, so then so we'll do that and then um, you're going to find out about the um, whether we need to do a new um, uh, questionnaire for all the employees or whether the we one probably will once we sign a contract with um, the Collins Center then that will start a process and the tiered process is questionnaires um, evaluation of the job descriptions based on that information and the current job descriptions and then they'll draft us new job descriptions once to the town they'll take the questionnaires and they'll do what they call a market survey of uh, various towns with differing populations it's when i did it in nashfield i specifically asked that we have that we didn't just focus on franklin county because franklin county is the most underpaid county in the state mm -hmm. so having a wider range with similar economic socioeconomic background um, for the towns can be very useful because what's going to happen is, is you're going to average it all out in, in a, a reference document that gives you a way to measure it. Yeah. Okay. I just haven't seen what the Collins Center uses for their measuring tool yet. So, and we also were talking about moving up the date of our next meeting so that we can look at the assistant uh, superintendent for the public works um, position. Hi, Trevor. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on your shoulder. <laughs> uh, oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'll step away. All right. So, Ooh, you have one of those sheet when are you going to move it up? Oh. I can't talk to this thing. On. <laughs> well, let's see. Let me pull up the calendar. Is Monday, do we want to stick with Monday? Is that because, or. Yeah. I'm fine with it. The only days I really can't do are Wednesdays in case the select board has a meeting, but it fluctuates. We could we normally would meet on the 20th. Yeah. We could move it up to the I could do the sixth. Let me let me grab my phone so I can check my calendar for the sixth. Oh, yeah, none of us are going away to our any any fourth of July week. Vacations, are we? <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Brad. I know. We're going to go next week. I would like to find a place somewhere that wouldn't cost me 10 fortunes. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go to a beach for a couple of days and stay at a very, like, safe looking inn and bring our bikes and see if we can manage some sort of beach vacation. But we'll see. I'd like to do camping, but nothing's open yet until July. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like it'd be the safest, but they just are. I get it, bathrooms and stuff. Those bathrooms, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, right. July 6th is good for me. Is did I miss that because I stepped away? Or are is July 6th good for others? Yep. Yeah, it's fine. And does that give yeah. you enough time to put together the the because you said you had to find or make the, the I have to find the um. I have to find the assistant superintendent job description that was accepted in 2014. All right. So I'm going to say July 6th. I'm actually, as we're talking, I'm writing the agenda for next time so that, because I forget. Um, Good. You're further ahead than me. I didn't even take minutes. <laughs> like <laughs> notes to myself. <laughs> so what I, I have is just our regular call to order, remove and, and review and approve minutes from tonight. Review the job description for the proposed assistant superintendent of public works uh, okay. position. And then do we want to also add on review the personnel board policy that you're going to update or is that going to be too too tight for you? Why so don't you put it on and if we get if if I get you a document, great. If I don't, at least it's there in case you want to talk about it. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Okay, so cool. that looks like it's all set. Right. So, All right. So, should we uh, close the meeting? 
Move, move to adjourn. Okay. Erica Ross, second. Um, all in favor? Lisa Middens, yes. Erica Bye. Ross, yes. Brilliant by Alec, yes. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Bye. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll Bye. see you. Bye. 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 Hey, Jen. <laughs> Have a great week. Hi. I'm Hi. like, oh. All right. I know, right? I'm like, oh. <laughs> all right. Thank you so Take much. Care. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.